Hey guys, I'm Jasmine. I'm at Climb Fit Macquarie Park and I want to show you guys how to climb some overhangs today. first started climbing I was petrified of overhangs. Um, I used to find them quite scary and daunting. Um, once I started to develop my technique and foundational technique and I started to become more familiar with the wall and the angles and my hips and my body position, it started to become a bit more approachable and less scary. So today I want to try share some tips with you guys to try and make it more possible. So starting from the top, before we start climbing, it's so important to do a full body warm up. We'll link our video for our full body warm up down below, but especially for overhangs, we wanna start concentrating on our shoulders, on our hips, on our knees, cause we're gonna be doing a lot of pulling in and we're gonna be pulling a lot with our hips. All right, so now we're warmed up, we're ready to run through some foundational techniques. So now that we're starting to tackle the overhangs, we should have the basics kind of down to scratch. If we don't, that's all okay, let's run through them. So when we're climbing, again, we wanna make sure we're climbing on the tips of our toes. So the reason for that is, when we're first climbing, I used to always fall into the, to the trap of being like, ah, climbing hold, and I just put my foot on it. And then your foot there, is stuck, it can't move. Whereas if you put the tip of your toe on the hold, it gives you so much room to bring your weight over to this side, over to that side. And then if need be, because you've got so much space on that hold, it allows you to come and swap feet, right? So you've got the tips of the toe on versus putting the ball of your foot on. You're stuck there, you can't move versus the tip of your toe. So we wanna make sure we're climbing on the tips of our toes. And then that our arms are straight overhangs. <laughs> Not so forgiving. Oh my God, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, overhangs aren't as forgiving as the straighter walls. They're a lot more energy requiring. So when, as soon as you start to engage your arms, you're digging into your power bank and you wanna try to reserve that. So what you wanna start doing is to be climbing with straight arms. And then that's when you start to use your whole chain. You start to rotate your hips to bring yourself to where you wanna go to make it a lot easier. So we'll show you that into play. And then the next thing as well. So we ran through our center of gravity. So your belly button, your hips, that's your center of gravity. So wherever that goes, you're gonna go. So if you're climbing an overhang with the booty sticking out, it's not gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be out here. So what you wanna try, aim to do, is you wanna try to keep the booty in. So wherever you wanna go. So try and see your next hold. If you bring your body or your hips to there, it makes it a lot easier to bring the rest of your body over that way versus, let's say this is your next hold and your hips over here. That's gonna be a lot harder versus you bringing your hips over and then reaching up. So it's all in the hips, such a valuable tool. And the next thing, I know we just had a little spiel about feet and footwork, but your toes, your toes are like a second pair of hands in a way. So this is really gross, forgive me, but when we're climbing, when we're putting our foot on a hold, we wanna make sure we're actually pulling and activating with the toe. It's so easy just to place your foot on, but make sure you're actually pulling and engaging. That's what's gonna help keep you in and keep your feet on with the overhangs because it's so much easier for your feet to pop off. That means you're not engaging with your feet and your core. So as soon as you get that foot and toe on, pull and engage the core and really pull on that toe. That's gonna help you pull in and that's gonna help you keep your feet on with overhangs. All right, so we've done our warm up, we've done our foundational techniques. It's now time to come to the climb. So with an overhang, or hopefully with it while you're climbing as well, before you're coming up to a boulder or a route, you're making sure that you're reading your climb. So with overhangs, they're not as forgiving. You don't have time to try to figure it out. Do I put my foot here? Does this go here? Is that my hold? So before anyone jumps on a climb, I want everyone to make sure that they're reading it. So we're gonna come up to this green overhang. We're gonna start to identify all the holds. So let's find these holds. We've got green holds here. Here, 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 more green holds there, 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 sneaky holds out that way, there, all the way up to the top, and that fluorescent green one's a down climb dog. Great. So then once we've identified all the holds, we're gonna start looking at the angles. Start to have a look at which way they're twisted. And again, this can be found on Bouldering Beginners Part One. Um, 
we start to have a look at the way that they're twisted. So we can see that's to the right, that's twisted to the left. So that's right, left, Ooh, bit tricky. This one's slightly pointing out to the right. So maybe I might go right hand there, left hand there. Might go up left there, maybe bring two hands out right. Oh, I missed that foothold over there. This is why we identify all the footholds and holds in general. Two hands there, then up to the top. So I've got a plan A in my head. It doesn't necessarily mean the way that I've read it is always going to be how I do it, but at least I know where all the holds are and I know my options. So if I can see, oh, this isn't working for me, I can move on because with the overhangs, they're quite ugh, energy intensive. So you want to make sure you're trying to be as efficient as possible. There's nothing worse than coming up to a climb and trying to read it as, as you go for it and not knowing where anything is. And then if this was a competition, that could have cost you your flash or an attempt as well. So it's all about that foundational technique. So we've had a little read, let's try it. So again, I'm gonna try to keep my arms straight. It's all in the hips. So I'm keeping the tips of my toes on the holds. And then also with overhangs and climbing as well, you don't always have to have your foot on a hold. The wall can become your best friend. You've got some special shoes. We're lucky here at ClimbFit as well. The walls are textured, so you've got that extra grip. <laughs> so um, you can use the wall as your foothold too. So what I'm gonna be doing, for the start, I can see that my first hold's a right hand hold. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my right foot on, left foot against the wall, and I'm gonna twist in. I'm gonna bring my hips in nice and close to the wall. My hips are gonna be doing the work, not the arms. And I'm gonna reach up. And again, see, because I've got the tips of my toe on, I can swap my foot, bring the other one there, and I can twist my hip in again. That's allowing me to twist my hip in. That's doing all the work. Yes, sure, I can bend in, but we're all about being efficient here. So I can twist in and reach up. Now, I'm gonna get my feet up. I can see maybe I might wanna go right hand. So I might bring my feet up, put my foot against the wall again, and look, twisting up. It's all in the hips. I swear it's not my arms. Well, it is part of my arms, but mostly my hips. <laughs> Um, so again, um, I've got my left foot on, bringing my foot out, keeping my hips in there. A lot of people fall into the trap of wanting to put their feet up nice and high up on the holds, but have a look at my bottom. That brings my bottom out. It's so much better to keep your feet in, down nice and low. It lets you bring your hips in close to the wall versus your feet being up really high. So again, I'm gonna get my foot up, out. And again, I'm gonna twist my hip in. And again, same thing, getting that foot up. And again, it's all in my hips, twisting. Again, keeping my hips nice and low. So that means you might wanna leave your foot off the wall versus putting it up here. And again, if you do put your foot up really high, that's when you're gonna bring your hips in and twist. And just remember to down climb to where it feels good for you. And hopefully you've practiced your safety balls. <laughs> All right, let's tackle that again with another overhang. All right, let's start again. Um, so now we've got our foundational techniques. We've been reading our climb and now we can do that again. So let's tackle this red five overhang. So again, same thing. Let's identify all the holes. We want to start looking, we've got one here, we've got one here. Do we know if the arete is in or out? The arete is out. Um, so we're identifying all the holds. Again, starting to look at the body position and the position of the holds. Um, here, here we've got holds up there. Ooh, looks a bit punchy. So now this is where it gets a little bit tricky and starts to get a little bit more advanced. So earlier I told you to start looking at the way that the holds are tilted. Although this holds tilted slightly to the um, left, it looks like I'd want to actually go maybe right hand first and then bring my left hand there. But we'll see, again, it's all coming up with a plan A and then coming up with a plan B if it doesn't work whilst you're on the wall. So having a look, I might start here and here, here, go maybe out here. Gaston out to there. So when you're going out like this, that's a Gaston. So we're gonna go there, maybe match. Might be 
time for a technique called a toe hook that we do on overhangs as well. So you're hooking with your toe to keep your whole body in. We'll see, maybe I'm wrong. Again, it's all coming up with that plan A. Right, big punchy move out. Left, right, left, as Steve would say, up to the top. Great, let's give it a go. Hopefully it'll work. And if it doesn't, that's okay. That's the whole point of bouldering. It's like 3D puzzles for your body. Ooh, starts a bit tinchy. So, two hands. Again, if you have a look, I'm trying to keep my arms. <laughs> and that's what happens with bouldering. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Fabulous talk, more chalk, Clive Fitz logo. Um, no. <laughs> um, so, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to keep our arms straight, but yes, it is hard to do it in an underclean position, but it's all about using our hips. If you have a look at my hip position, I'm gonna try to keep my hips in as close as I can. So let's try that again. So I'm turning already with my right hip to reach up. And again, I'm turning, I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but that's where, so it's all about keeping your hips in nice and close. So we can do a little toe hook, so that keeps my whole body in, which allows me to match. So that's bringing two hands on the hold. My foot. And again, reverse flag. So I'm leaving my foot and body weight down under here. So I'm trying to bring my hip underneath the hold. Using the wall as my foothold. And again, twisting, using my hips. and bringing my body underneath me to match. All right, you've got the formula now, let's put it to work. So same thing again, we're gonna try, try tackle this pink three. So we're gonna start having a look at where all the footholds are and where all the handholds are. So I've got holds here, boom, 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 here. Got another hold here, got some holds there. I can see one far right. And then I also wanna take into consideration of any features which are those um, big gray boxes coming out from the wall. Because uh, sometimes we might use them for our feet or for our hands. Um, in a climb fit, the gray ones are in for everything. Other gyms might have different rules. Um, so features there, got my finish hold there. Now I want to start to look at the angles and what I might do with my body. So now that we have figured out the hand holds and which way they're going, I want to start thinking about my hip position and my body position as well. Try to add another layer. So here, I can see some high foot holds here. Maybe I might even drop my knee in. So like the warm up that we did, coming up here, getting my feet out, using the wall as our foothold, either smearing or active flagging as some might put it. Coming up to here, under clean. Looks like there might be another twist there, there. Outright, got another hold in. Looks like it's just like a big twisting climb, which is cool. You might start to notice some other climbers as well at your gym. They start look like they're starting to look like they're doing a little dance. Hopefully, you'll start joining them too. It, it does look a bit strange, I guess, when you're adding hip movements as well. Gosh, I was terrible. Okay, so let's see if my plan works. So I'm gonna twist that knee in. It's all in the hips. So from today, hopefully, oh geez, hopefully we can get out. And it's all in the hips. I like the different foothold options. That was great. Keeping down low. Again, don't be fooled by the extra handholds. It's so easy to try bring your feet up. You're like, handhold or foothold. And you bring your hand up, foot up, sorry. And that brings your whole center of gravity out versus bringing my foot out just to bring my hips in underneath to where I want to go. And same thing again. Oh, sorry, same thing again. Not being fooled. Now I can bring it up. And again, trying to keep those hips in as close as I can to the wall. All in the hips. And again, making sure down climbing to is comfortable for us. Ugh. No. <laughs> um, 
this is just a really good physical representation of how I was talking about pulling with your toes earlier. So if you see me place my foot, I'm actually using it to pull my body weight and hips over here to under the hold. So I'm actively using it. I'm not just placing it. And then again, you can use the features for footholds as well. And it's all about that body tension. Really putting pressure on your foothold. Nice little toe hook finish just to try to hit, but that's okay, you don't have to do that as well. So one of the things I really like about climbing is that there's so many different ways to do things. There's lots of different ways to peel a potato. And that's when you and your friends can try work out different beta. You can try link all your little techniques and your foundations together. And you can try and make it work. So that's what I love. Like I climb with many people, different shapes and sizes, and it's just so much fun and interesting seeing all the different ways and all the different betas. So that's how you do a climb. We come up with when we climb. And that's what I love about bouldering and climbing. It's such a fun social sport.